All right. After setting up all of your site-wide settings on your new Focus website, uh, that, again, that's stuff that's not going to change. It's sort of a set, set it once and forget it list of properties and stuff uh, that's relevant to your website, stuff like Google Analytics, uh, domain verification, things like that. Once you got all that stuff out of the way, it's time to start getting a little bit more into customization and personalization in, in terms of uh, adding your branding and choosing how your site is, is going to work. And then once, once we get through that step, then we'll get into the finer details of granular customization, like really changing little bits and, and details that you'd like to change. But before we do that, we're gonna do some more general stuff. And the first thing we wanna do with your new Focus website is to choose your preferred content presentation mode. Now we'll look at uh, the specific options here in just a bit, but what I want to uh, show you before we get started is really kind of explain how this stuff works. So really, you're going to choose a content presentation mode, and but it's really only relevant on larger screens, okay? So you'll, you'll see a little bit of an effect on um, like iPad size devices, but by the time you, but you really won't see the true effects of your content presentation mode unless you are viewing your website on a you know large format device like a desktop computer, a laptop, things like that. So let's take a look at what your, dev uh, your website's gonna look like on a mobile device, for example. We'll choose an, an iPhone, uh, and this is obviously very, very small. Let me see if I can make it a little bigger for you guys. We will fit it, okay. So on a, a very small screen, there really is no content presentation style because no matter what content presentation mode you have selected for your website, you've only got so much horizontal space on smaller screens. So things like font sizes, which get uh, bumped up for bigger screens, uh, on all mobile devices, they get bumped down a size to fit uh, very nicely on the screen, like headlines get bumped down a size. Your, your regular text is gonna be whatever you, you've chosen. But you know, headlines get bumped down to fit. Images obviously can only be so big. Um, you know, everything sort of becomes the same on a mobile device, no matter what kind of pro content presentation mode you've selected. But since this is about choosing your content presentation mode, let's look at your site now in a desktop view because that is what is uh, appropriate and relevant here. So to choose your content presentation mode, I'm gonna flop over to the uh, the WordPress admin, and right now we are inside the thesis admin. And this time, we are going to visit the skin submenu, and we're going to, going to go to content and display. And on the content display page, this top section is really known as your display options. And you'll see the first choice here is your content presentation mode. Now, when you just install Focus in any new Focus installation, your site is running in readability mode with an optional sidebar. I'll show you what that is. So in readability mode, the so in, in, in so we have three modes, readability, focus mode, and full width mode. Full width mode is kind of a nothing. I'll explain that at the very end, but so it's really two. It's readability and focus. In both readability and focus modes, your content column your text is constrained to a, a, a highly readable, finely tuned width uh, that promotes easier reading. The reason why we do this is because we know from studies that visitors to websites specifically will not read super, line, super long lines of text. They, in fact, they actually want to start reading really, really short lines of text, and then once they're in the flow of reading, they want to read what is comfortable to them. And so in order to play to that basic psychology for visitors, we want to constrain the text to a very usable width. Now, if you just install Focus, you're gonna be presented with a system font. So like if you're on a Mac, it's gonna be San Francisco typeface. If you're on a Windows machine, it's gonna be Seago UI, which I believe is still their primary typeface. But bottom line, it's going to use whatever is natively installed on your, your operating system, because that, that's fast. And also, it's usually a, a good uh, accessibility type font, easy to read, easy to scan, that type of thing. But it's size 18, and the, the width that you're going to start with is 644 pixels. The reason we do this is because size 18 of a system font at 644 pixels wide is going to 
leave us about at 80 or 81 characters per line. We know from studies that visitors to websites want to read text that's between 55 and 95 characters per line. Uh, in my view, that 80 mark is pretty close to a sweet spot. And what really makes 80 great is that when you have certain types of posts, I don't think I have any good examples here, but I'll, I'll pull up another one. Uh, for certain types of posts, uh, we, we'd like to put an image at the beginning of the post, and that will actually make... Uh, that will make the first lines of text much shorter than they would be otherwise. So let me get my example here. Here we go, sorry about that. Okay, so you see I've stuck a, an image out to the right here and what it does is it makes this first paragraph look a little bit more appealing than uh, just a big, you know, the, the longer lines of text that tip of, are typical in the rest of the article. So this early constraining of the text really helps people dive into your content. And the reason why I choose 644 pixels wide at 18 pixels, and that leaves the 80 characters per line, it's because when you add this image, then what's left is usually between 35 and 55 characters per line, which studies show is sort of the sweet spot to get people engaged and have them reading before they've even consciously considered whether or not they actually want to be reading your content. So that is a powerful little tweak. This is just one of the many, many things in focus that's already tuned to uh, known user psychology and things like that. Okay, so there's your ex explanation for why it is the way it is. But the next thing here, and why readability mode is the way it is, is this. So in readability mode, the content, this is not a very good article example, in readability mode, the content is going to be aligned to the left. And it's all anchored to the left. Okay, so we do have all this extra usable white space here and could fill it up with text or with other stuff. But I would uh, encourage you to exercise some caution there because you don't want to introduce elements that are going to distract people from your content unless your goal is to distract them from your content, but uh, I don't think that makes very much sense. And uh, if you think about it, it probably doesn't make too much sense for you to distract people from your content. So anyway, in readability mode, this 644 pixel wide uh, column of content, which you can change by the way, you can make it however wide you want, um, is aligned to the left, and this creates what's known as a left side visual anchor. So in populations of people, where the text runs from left to right, like English-speaking people, for example, uh, it is known that the best way to keep people's attention and drive it all the way down the page while, while they're engaged is to have a very strong left side visual anchor. When we conduct eye, uh, eye tracking studies on websites like this, what we see is there is a very, very, very high affinity. The eyes keep going back to the strong left side anchor in the layout, the eyes go over here and they dart out to see things that are appealing or uh, arrest their attention. But uh, we also see a longer eye track, uh, an eye path down the page on this left side on pages that are designed this way. Uh, now, I'm not saying this is the absolute best way to do things. Everything is sort of contextual. There's ways that you can you know, present content a little bit differently and still get great results. I'll show you right here on DIYThemes.com on my site. I have my content aligned in the middle, okay? So I don't really have that incredibly tight left side visual anchor, but if you get on the page, you can kind of see there's a quasi visual anchor here, and then I use large horizontal elements as uh, interruptions, but, um, you know, th this will also drive people down the page, so I'm not saying left side anchor is the only way to do it, but I am saying it's very effective. I use this. This is my personal website, personified.com, that we're looking at here. I use readability mode there. I think it's super, super, uh, you know, it's just very simple, very effective. I'm not playing any games here. I'm, I'm just at practicing the fund fundamentals and knowing, you know, reveling in the fact that that's going to get me all the results that I want. I don't have to do anything fancy. I just give people what I know works for them. Okay, so that is readability mode. Readability mode, your content is constrained and aligned to the left, all right? Readability mode also has an optional sidebar that you can deploy on other pages. That is beyond the scope of this particular video. 
I've got another video where I show you exactly how this works, and I, I'll, I'll drop a link in the description, and I encourage you to view that if you want more information about the specifics of readability mode. But now we're going to switch this to focus mode and see what the difference is, or differences are, I should say. So now we are in uh, focus mode. I just changed that. I held shift and clicked refresh when I viewed my website to dump the browser cache and to, you know, uh, reflect properly reflect the changes I just made and now what we can see is different is that the left side visual anchor is no longer the thing that's driving the boat this is a centered visual anchor okay so the the uh, site title the tagline are now centered the navigation menu items are now centered within the available space the headline is now centered the byline is now centered my uh, featured image for this particular article is also centered, as is the caption that goes along with it. Um, within the body of the article, heading sizes 1, 2, and 3 are now centered in focus mode. Uh, heading size 4 is not. That's because I generally have heading size 4 uh, reserved as a list header. So for example, if we were going to, if, just imagine this is uh, presented in heading size four, this would then introduce these list items. And so it's a little weird to introduce them in the middle and then have the items over to the left. I like the introduction to live directly above the stuff that follows. And also another caveat there where you could say, well, Chris, why don't you center your list? Well, lists look like crap when they're centered, okay? I want the, the bullet points to be lined up perfectly that uh, that's a better better formatting for a list okay so focus mode takes that constrained content width that column of text places it in the middle of the usable layout and gives you this more center oriented presentation which a lot of people like I will be honest focus has been out for about uh, 14 months uh, nearly 14 months and most people prefer focus mode I get that uh, I think there is a a very uh, strong tendency to want to use or fill available horizontal real estate. And even though readability mode and focus mode are giving you the exact same content in the exact same space, there is a sense that the centered version better fills the available space, even though that's there really is truly no difference in terms of the amount of white space that's been filled up. Uh, I think people, uh, I think this kind of sort of uh, plays to a, a little bit of a built-in OCD in our, our human DNA. Anyhow, uh, even though focus mode is more popular than readability mode, I want you to consider readability mode because it may be best, it may be simplest for your use cases, and oftentimes some of the uh, custom CSS that you may find yourself wanting to apply to your website to do things that Focus doesn't do natively. A little bit simpler to add in a readability environment. It doesn't mean everything is, but you know something to consider. Little, there are some little differences between the, t the two uh, content presentation styles. But the reason that uh, I wanted you to view this video before going into some of your um, branding customizations and things like, or deeper customization, is because the way this stuff is presented is going to affect how you feel about some of the other changes you're going to make. So for example, the next couple of videos I'm gonna guide you through, uh, talk about adding a logo, so replacing your site title with a logo, and also maybe adding a header image up here at the top. And depending on what content presentation style you're using, focus or uh, readability mode, the vibe you get from, from you know implementing a logo, implementing a header image, it's going to be different depending on your content presentation mode. And so I wanted to run you through this first so you understand what you are seeing when you're, when you're you know, adding a logo, adding a header image, and how you feel about the way that ends up coming out. Uh, you'll have a better context for what's going on if you have already chosen your content presentation mode. All right, now last point I wanna make. I did say there were three content presentation modes, readability, focus, and full width. I'm just going to demonstrate full width. I do not think you should use it. The only people the only reason this exists is because I know there's some people out there who are experienced website developers and designers, and they want to start with a canvas that has no uh, restrictions or constrictions whatsoever. Um, even though within Focus, the the constrained content width only you know it only applies to a column of content anyway, a column of text. Uh, you know, it's whatever. Um, even if you use readability mode or focus mode, you can deploy a custom template that's a full page template that will 
allow your text to expand to fill all the available space. So you don't need to run your site in full width mode, but it's just there in case, uh, you know, for some some crazy customization, if it makes it easier to, to do that customization, you can run the site this way. But anyway, all, all that does, all full width presentation mode does is basically cut out all the nice stuff, the thoughtful stuff that Focus does for your text, changing, uh, massaging down the, the, the font sizes, things like that, uh, making sure everything's super optimized for desktop versus mobile, and obviously not presenting text that is too wide for people. People do not want to read a huge imposing wall of text like this and will not. If you have the same information on a page like this, full width, or the same information presented in a constrained column of text, the constrained column of text will produce better results every time. It's going to produce higher conversions, higher click-throughs, better engagement. People are going to get farther down the page more consistently because, because, it is giving, presenting them with a psychological environment that makes them want to consume. It doesn't, it doesn't present them with something that, that, that asks them the following questions like, eh, do I really want to get into this? Is this too much work? People aren't thinking in those terms. In fact, like I said, you can use ninja tactics such as constraining the first paragraph to be a little bit you know, narrower than the rest of your text. People look at this and they'll already be reading this before they even have a chance to ask themselves, do I really want to be reading this? So anyway, don't use full width mode unless you absolutely know what you're doing as far as design customizations and stuff go, because you'll be giving up some of the uh, you know benefits within Focus that have taken me years and years to develop. So I would not uh, I would not just give up on that equity um, just because I have some harebrained idea about wanting to fill up the whole space of the page. There's very specific reasons why Focus does not work that way by default. So anyhow, there it is, readability mode, focus mode. Now you know the deal. Select the one that you like best for your website, and then you can go into the, uh, the other videos I have in the setup guide about going through and adding your branding and adding the types of customizations you want. All right, stay tuned.